Hi, my name is attorney Casey Walker. I'm the founder of VA Disability Group. The purpose of today's discussion is to discuss the VA's five-year rule. So what is the five-year rule? The five-year rule is the VA's way of determining whether they can schedule you for a future re-examination. That is to suggest whether they can consider looking at improvement of your symptoms symptoms of a service-connected condition. Absent sustained improvement, the VA cannot schedule you for a future examination after five years. So let's put that into context. In 2015, if a veteran's awarded service connection at 50% for migraines, if they don't schedule a future examination on that date, that is to suggest if your rating decision does not say there's a likelihood of improvement within the text, then your condition is not scheduled for a future examination. Now, the context here is that the VA did not schedule you for a future examination. Once five years have passed, the VA has a heightened burden in order to try to bring you in for a periodic re-examination. If your migraines have been stable for five years and you have not been re-examined and the VA did not schedule you for a re-examination, the VA must demonstrate sustained improvement. So let's take a look at the regulations and see how does the VA even just define sustained improvement. We're gonna to turn to 38 CFR 3.344. The VA adjudicator and decision makers are instructed to look at the totality of the evidence. They can't take one piece of evidence out of context of the totality and hold that against the veteran and schedule a periodic re-examination. They must look at the totality of the evidence. Ooh. They can't take a single examination and hold that against the veteran. Yet again, in the spirit of the totality of evidence, they need to look at all the treatment records and all of the examinations. Stay in the course with the migraine example. If a veteran is awarded 50% because they have one prostrating examination per month. Maybe the veteran had a good month, one month in 2018, but maybe he had three prostrating exams that kept him out of work the entire month, the very next month. So if a adjudicator relied on one examination report saying that the veteran did not have a prostrating examination for one month, that would be a real disservice and that would be unjust to the veteran. And that's an example of a single examination being taken out of context. And we can find this language again in 38 CFR 3.344. The next is that if the VA is going to rely on an examination, it must not be less full and complete than the previous exam relied on to award the favorable decision. So to put that into an affirmative context, it must be full and complete. It can't be less complete than the previous exam the VA relied on to give a favorable decision. Sometimes veterans get new diagnoses. So this regulation states that just because a veteran gets a new diagnosis doesn't mean they should be brought in for a re-examination. So what does that look like? Well, veterans might have a sprain or a uh, patellofemoral pain syndrome of the, the right knee. And what usually happens with these types of joints is they become degenerative over, degenerative over time. That's to suggest that there's a natural progression of a strain or a sprain or patellofemoral pain syndrome that generally ends up becoming arthritic, degenerative arthritis. Just because a veteran has a progression of a sprain to arthritis with due time does not mean it's a new condition. Now you'll see this weaponized against veterans routinely, which can be quite frustrating because it, sometimes it's clearly a progression. Another example of a new diagnosis that's weaponized against veterans is in the mental health realm. So mental health gets tricky. You might have a condition known as PTSD, but with that you might have anxiety, you might have depression. There's a litany of symptoms that can accompany one single mental health diagnosis. Oftentimes, mental health examiners will determine that a different diagnosis should be given to a veteran. So they might be diagnosed with PTSD in year one, but then in year six, it changes to generalized anxiety disorder. Well, that's not a, that's not a good basis to bring a veteran in for a future examination. Anxiety is a symptom and a diagnosis. Generalized anxiety disorder is a diagnosis, whereas anxiety can be a symptom of PTSD. There's so much overlap. The adjudicators and the judges are instructed to be careful and to, to really give a lot of consideration to a progression of a condition 
or if a new diagnosis is superimposed over a previous diagnosis. Sometimes symptoms can be in remission, especially in mental health. You see a lot of this with people, and, and that's normal. Uh, but just because a veteran's having a good few months doesn't mean that they no longer have PTSD. Maybe they've avoided certain triggering things. Maybe they've uh, had a less stressful month at work or something, but that, that condition is likely still there. So. Bringing it full circle, we're talking about the five-year rule. And all of those examples are examples of things that the VA must consider before they flippantly bring you in for a future examination if your condition has been static for five years or more. And by, by condition, we're talking about the evaluation of such. Uh, so if you're service-connected with migraines, we're not talking about the service connection element. We're talking about the evaluation of 50%, which in the migraine realm would be one prostrating headache per month. So what are some unique considerations? Well, if a veteran in their initial disability evaluation has a feature exam right at the outset, uh, be advised that it's difficult to appeal that. VA adjudicators are given great discretion to determine whether they think there'll be a likelihood of improvement. So it can be a tricky one to appeal. Oftentimes they'll say it's not even an appealable issue. Another consideration is that if a veteran appeals a disability evaluation, that evaluation could go all the way up to the BVA, which is known as the Board of Veterans Appeals. Now that board judge could order another examination. So if you are happy with your 20% disability rating on, say, the back, but you think that you might be eligible for a 40% disability evaluation, you're still within that sweet spot. Maybe it was found to be a static condition, but you just weren't happy with the evaluation. That judge might order an exam, which is another examination. And unfortunately, those examinations that a judge orders where you're trying to seek more, those examinations can actually be weaponized against you if you, you draw a bad examiner or maybe your symptoms just aren't that bad that day. That examiner could annotate that your symptoms actually man manifested to a degree that's less compensable than your previous evaluation. That's another consideration is appealing to a judge can lead to another examination at some point way down the road because BVA cases take a while. Another consideration is that the BVA and the VA, they're not prohibited from scheduling future examinations. So this five-year rule doesn't prohibit the VA from scheduling future exams. They just have a heightened burden in order to schedule such an examination. They have a heightened burden to demonstrate all those elements have been met that we discussed in 38 CFR 3.344. And lastly, if you do have a future examination that's noted in your initial rating decision, overwhelm the VA for the next five years because they usually schedule those in every two to five year increments and that's straight out of the regulation. No less than two, no more than five years. Overwhelm the VA with documentation, with treatment records, with symptom logs, with buddy statements, and perhaps even a DBQ. The goal is the VA should look at your file and say, there's no point of even bringing this guy back in for a re-examination. All this evidence that he submitted to us over the last three to two to five years is overwhelming, and there's no likelihood of improvement here. So that's how you can still mitigate the potential for a future examination, even if they say there's a likelihood of improvement at the outset of the initial disability evaluation assigned. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Comment below. Have a good day.